Hi, my name is Alex Kaplan. I'm the Global Leader for Sales for IBM Watson Education. Uh, I'm also a member of the IBM Industry Academy, which is an organization within IBM which brings together uh, all of the experts that IBM has in different industries around the world. And our job is to look at uh, changing trends uh, within industries and figure out how IBM can apply its technology toolkits to help facilitate uh, change in those industries. Yeah, over the last couple of years, IBM has built a solution called Watson Classroom for Educators. Uh, this is a tool which is designed to help teachers do a number of different important things in terms of uh, personalizing education. One is to understand where a student is relative to mastery of skill at any point in time. So if you look at a student's uh, learning progression, we want to be able to apply artificial intelligence and big data and analytics to help teachers understand specifically where that student is, uh, where they have strengths and where they have weaknesses, and then what the next best action the teacher can take to help that student. A second thing that the solution does is it provides personalized recommendations of instructional materials, instructional objects that are be appropriate to each individual student to help them maximize their learning, uh, to address deficiencies that they might have in their knowledge skills, as well as to assist them uh, with making additional progress if they're more advanced. And the final thing that the solution really focuses upon is upon allowing teachers to talk with each other about students, so using fact-based information as well as social media types of tools that allow uh, real-time collaboration between teachers about students. So it's a very powerful school, uh, tool for teachers to use in the classroom as they're walking around to not only work with directly with students to personalize it, but also to collaborate with their colleagues about individual students. What the teacher is doing while they're walking around the classroom is they're actually inputting their observation of skill mastery that are aligned to educational standards. So it's both a combination of material that's presently available for the teacher as well as information that the teacher is, uh, is putting in there. One of the really important design points when we built the solution was to make sure that this was not more work for teachers, but it actually saved teachers time. So if you look at the way teachers are working today, what they're doing is everything that we just discussed, they're currently doing, except they're doing it using spreadsheets, they're taking notes in a journal, they're writing it on paper, whatever, and this eliminates a lot of the manual work that teachers are doing now uh, through the automation. People like the solution, it's easy to use, it's attractive, it's providing them information they didn't have before, it's providing them access to personalized materials, digital materials that they've had trouble getting. So the challenges that we've run into with it uh, are really related to the quality and quantity of information that's available about individual students. And this is actually quite different from school district to school district. And what we found is that the granularity of the assessment data that's available is really quite diverse across the U.S. So we struggle sometimes with the amount of data that's available to provide these very specific uh, recommendations. And then the other one is, and this was a big surprise to us, is there's actually very little digital instructional material of quality that's available to teachers. So even though there's been a tremendous shift towards the use of technology within the classroom, when you actually look at instructional materials, uh, you know, historically textbooks and so on, the amount that's available out there that's actually aligned to standards at a granular level is actually quite small, and most school districts don't have much of it. So, you know, there's still a lot of room for growth here in terms of uh, using these digital platforms to uh, really support personalized education. And, you know, we think that uh, that will continue to pick up pace. But those are really the two primary areas where, where the solution struggles is digital materials that are aligned to standards and then very detailed data about student academic achievement. You know, this is not just about crunching numbers and loading up instructional materials, but you really have to imply intelligence to that information in order to be able to harvest the kind of information that teachers need. Because one of the key design points here is for us to, what I would say is push all of this information into the background and just inform the teachers about what they want to do next. The only way that that can be done is through very sophisticated applications of artificial intelligence and cognitive technologies such that when I get a teacher gets uh, a recommendation for a piece of material, it's one that through a machine reading 
has already been tagged and aligned to the instructional standards uh, that the machine understands, you know, the subject area, it understands the grade level for which it's appropriate, the cognitive abilities of the student in order to do it. And so we're applying those kind of technologies here uh, across all of this information. Uh, and so that's really a fundamental shift in terms of the complexity and sophistication of the technologies. We didn't want to build something that, uh, you know, would require a much intervention on the part of the teacher uh, and that could not support uh, a mass personalization, which is, you know, which is the work that we're doing through these technologies.